Hello, and welcome to another edition of Attract Well Office Hours. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Attract Well, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, everyone. Really glad you're here today. We are. We're really excited to have you here today. Today, we're going to be talking about making your sales pages and your registration pages more effective utilizing countdown timers. We're going to be exploring some of the newer features of Get Oiling, or sorry, with, with Attract Well pages today, uh, focusing on uh, our countdown timers, like I mentioned, as well as the insertion of Q&A sections uh, that you can add to registration and sales pages to make your closing that much more effective uh, on page just like that. So welcome. We are so thrilled to have you here today. Let us know in the chat where you're coming in from. Where are you joining us from? What do you do? Who do you help? We're excited to hear from you. Uh, we have some slides to get into today. We've got some live work uh, with uh, with someone who's uh, signed up to uh, work together today. Uh, so a lot to get into, some exciting updates. So uh, let's get this show on the road. Let us know uh, again, where you're coming in from and what you do. We have such an incredible community here and we're so thrilled to serve you every Thursday at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. So Greg and I are going to pop out a video so that we can get on into these slides I've prepared for you. And then uh, from there, we have some resources to share as well as some live demonstration of those resources and how you can put these things to use in your AttractWell account today. So today we're going to talk about creating sales pages, utilizing countdown timers and Q&A features. So today we will open up first with an exciting announcement from Greg. There is um, a feature that several of you have requested that we've been able to update uh, regarding videos in Attract Well. Uh, we are going to talk about using countdown timers in Attract Well on sales pages and on event registration pages. We'll also talk about setting up Q&A sections on your pages to close more leads and sales. And as always, we have space for live help and Q&A. So if you came here today uh, with questions, please go ahead and add those to the Q&A. If you are watching this in our Facebook group or if you are watching this in the future as a YouTube recording, you can go to attractwell.com slash office hours to be able to join one of these live Zoom calls where you can get hands-on help and meet this incredible community here. If you would like to work together live, you can also go to attractwell.com slash work review and we can set aside time on an upcoming call to work together. I uh, look forward to working with you as I'll be working with um, Sonia here on today's call, I believe. And of course, if you'd like to have somebody just do some of this work for you, you can go to attractwell.com slash concierge to learn more about our incredible team and how they can help you make your website dreams come true. All right. So uh, before we get into today's slides and uh, in our training and our resources, I would like to toss this over to Greg uh, to share with us a really quick and awesome update to Attractwell videos. Sounds good. Thanks, Ashley. Let me fire up the old screen share here. Okay, so this is a uh, small change, but I think it can have big implications for what providers and, and tools you need in your tool chest here, your digital tool chest. Uh, the change today is in videos. So the videos, we've had that for, <clears throat> I don't know, quite some time now uh, to be able to upload and host your videos in your courses, but the, cor the videos have not been able to be down, or I should say the original video for you is like a backup, has not been able to be downloaded. Well, uh, as of, and this would be for new videos uploaded as of, I don't know, sometime late yesterday, the originals are now being saved. So they are available. The ones that are available for download will have a little download icon down here. I wanted to show you what it looks like for some videos that are available for download and some that don't have the original on there. So like this account, this tab that I have open uh, shows this icon. The original is not available for, to download. The little cloud icon is grayed out. And then over here, this is an account that does have the uh, originals available. So uh, it's not grayed out and it's clickable. So essentially, you know, a lot of video services, third-party video services that you guys were using prior to uh, us integrating this into Attract while video hosting, um, they would make a backup of your original. And now this included um, with your plan will save the backup. Again, it's only for new videos uploaded, I would say basically since late yesterday, uh, and definitely today, uh, we'll have the backup, the original saved. Only you have access to it. It's a password with a time limited link. So you only, you know, it's only able to be, you can't, people can't share a link. The link expires, you know, you couldn't share that. So there's really no way to get access to it uh, except through your system. So it's a safe download, uh, but you can 
then if you, I mean, it's still always a good idea to have another backup somewhere else, keep it on drive, especially if it's a really important video and you need it and it's, you know, your internet isn't working or something. So it's always good to have those, but this is just another layer for you out there to um, make it make it easier, especially, I mean, this is really useful too. Like if you have, um, cause you can host a zoom meeting and record it to the cloud and there's a one click copy over to my video library. Um, then the original will actually be saved there from your zoom. So you can download it later. Um, otherwise you wouldn't, you previously weren't able to get that off of there. So anyway, that's the update short and sweet here. Uh, hopefully it'll be, be useful for you. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. So now you guys know that you can do that easily. Let's get into our content today so that you can learn how to, uh, to more easily introduce uh, the, uh, the idea of time scarcity into how you are presenting and selling uh, your offers, whether they be free or paid. So if you are someone who has time sensitive offers, so this might be a coaching program that has a specific start date, um, you know, or some kind of a cohort that you're running where, where people have to register by a certain date and time, uh, or perhaps there is a live event that might be free or paid, a workshop, a webinar style presentation, something like that, that is time sensitive. You can use the clock to your advantage with countdown timers in AttractWell. So what you're looking at here are two examples. These will be included in the resources that we'll share with you. Um, the one on the left here is an example of including a, a countdown timer on a sales page for a program. And on the right, we have a registration page uh, for you if you are going to be offering some kind of time sensitive or time restricted training or in this uh, this particular uh, page as well could be used as a simplified sales page template. So let's start with sales pages. Now, sales pages, if you're not familiar and attract well, are a great place for you to sell things like courses, programs, services, uh, maybe one-time offers, such as, you know, workshops that people can access once, etc. Now, one-time payments can be processed on page with sales pages. So you can set up something, you're going to sell a course, for instance, it's $497. You can collect that $497 on the sales page and then send them off to where they're going to go right? Uh, but if you do have an offer that is um, set up for multiple part payments or recurring payments, uh, those would need to, your sales page would need to be directing them to a vault checkout page. Um, again, this is only if uh, you have a recurring payment that you're wanting to, uh, to sell. So you can sell on your sales page. And then when they click the button with the call to action, you send them over to check out on the vault checkout page if you have recurring payments. Now, a quick note, because we are going to be focusing on the utilization of countdown timers on these pages today. If you are going to use a countdown timer on your sales page, it is very important that you establish where you're going to be sending visitors after the countdown ends. All right. So that means that if um, you know your your count your countdown timer is going to end next Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, then you want to make sure that if someone shows up at 6:59 p.m. Eastern time and is on that page until seven passes, they need to be redirected to somewhere else. Right. If they show up at 7:01, they need to not see that page. The door has closed. Right. So where do we send them after the door closes? Where do we send them after the cart closes? That's what this is all about. So make sure that you're clear on what that looks like for you. This can be a waitlist page, and I'll show you exactly where to find a template for this. And you could also send them to just a general page if you aren't going to be offering that particular thing again, or you don't know when you will, you don't know that you necessarily want a wait list for it. You could send them to a page that explains that the offer has closed with links and maybe a call to action for them to visit an alternate offer or to find you on social media uh, or to get on a call with you or whatever your call to action would be. Now let's have a quick overview here of what is in a great sales page. We do have additional sales page training that really goes into the psychology of each section. And of course we have a template in your system, including the updated one I'm gonna share with you today that follows that formula. But essentially what we're looking for is first a clear and compelling offer of an outcome that's important to the person that you wanna buy, right? We aren't just going to say, here's my program, it's called this, 
I talk about this, do you want to buy it? We need to say, do you want painted picture of the future that they want, right? This outcome that they want. We want to make sure we're really clear on what the outcome is. And then we need to have a clear and compelling call to action because throughout this page, we are going to be showing them how we can connect the dots between where they are right now and that picture of where they want to be. Mm -hmm. And then when they realize it, we want to have a call to action that's there that says, save your seat, that says, get started now, right? Some kind of clear and compelling call to action. Now, if you were on our training last week where we talked about bios versus about me pages, uh, I was talking a little bit about this idea that when you are on a particular page on your website, you're carrying on a conversation with your ideal client, right? You are saying things in one section and then anticipating sort of how they are responding in their mind. Because even though we aren't sitting across from them and having an actual conversation as we would if we had met in person, their brain is responding to the things that we say as they process what we've put on the page. So we need to really anticipate what that flow of back and forth is going to be as though we were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation so that we can do things like provide supporting proof through, um, you know, through, through client testimonials or address things like objections where you could ideally anticipate them coming up, right? If you brought up one thing, it might be good in the next section to maybe touch on what might be a, um, an objection that might be coming to mind for them, uh, you know, providing some kind of supporting information that helps that to smooth that resistance over. Now, uh, you also want to make sure that uh, further down the page, after we've really kind of bloomed this conversation, uh, you know, brought out all of the things that we really want to say and share about how life could look and how this really is the thing that they need, we then want to start breaking down the stuff of what you offer, right? So um, it's module one, it's module two, it's module three. We cover this, we cover that, we cover the other thing, right? And I want you to also consider adding what each part is worth. Maybe considering if you were to charge someone for that outcome or for that work, what would you charge for it? Because what we're doing before we tell them how much your offer is, is we are really building up the perceived value of its constituent parts, right? Because if we went straight to here's how much it costs and we haven't really shown them the value of each of these pieces, then it's not going to land as well. You're not gonna see as solid of a conversion, right? Of course, if you are offering any kind of bonuses in addition to the actual substance of your offer, you want to put them on this page as well as as well as their uh, their value. And then, you, of course, you will be tied. You'll be uh, totaling all of that up and uh, and and sharing that with a call to action. Uh, you'll have testimonials from clients, case studies and stories, really any kind of proof that you can incorporate to support the points that you're making, because this is a person who is making a decision without you being there with them. So as much of this as you can include, uh, the better. Then you want to also include your bio uh, and, and maybe contextualize your bio just a little bit uh, to, uh, to demonstrate that the benefits that you are able to provide through this program or this offer, whatever it is that, that, that you're talking about on the sales page, is something that you are uniquely qualified uh, to address. And then, of course, any fine print, right? Guarantees, refund policies, et cetera. Now let's talk about registration pages. This is a really great tool to use for things like webinars and workshops, um, or you know, even if you have something that is for sale uh, that you are like maybe a lower cost offer, right? So the sales page example that you guys are going to see today is a quite long one that can be used for high ticket sales. Uh, if you have a, um, a program or an offer or a course or something that you're not selling for a whole lot of money, it's a little easier to make the decision. You could benefit from using a shorter form page. And this one is actually a great starting point for that. So registration pages in Attract Well, these are going to be used for in-person and virtual events, such as workshops and webinars. They can be free or paid. If you're using a countdown timer, just like I mentioned before, you got to make sure that you know where you're going to send people after the countdown ends. So that might be a wait list landing page for when the event is offered again. Uh, or again, if, if the offer has closed, you can maybe send them somewhere else, such as to the events listing on your website, if this is you know something that, that you're offering. Now, what goes into a registration page? 
just like the sales page, we need to know the outcome. If I'm going to give you an hour of my life, what do I get back from it? So we need to be really clear. If someone uh, takes advantage of this thing, what's in it for them? And then we need to tell them to take advantage of it, right? We need to break down big picture, right? So maybe three bullet points tops, what they're going to learn or walk away with. You want to supplement here with testimonials from clients as much as possible, and then include a little bit of your bio and why they should work with you. Again, contextualize this around the outcomes that you are offering on this page and FAQs. This is going to be an important place to include things like, will this event be recorded? Can I bring someone with me? Um, you know, what are the prerequisites or what have you, right? So you can add FAQs to a page like this as well. So like I mentioned, this registration page that I'm going to show you, it's the second of the two in your resources, is a great starting point if you do want a shorter, more simplified sales page for a low ticket offer. All right, so let's go see them and then get into our live help and Q&A for today. So let me move over to here. Awesome. Okay. Uh, now this is our resource bundle that we'll be claiming today. And it has, again, two pages. We've got a sales page with a countdown timer and a workshop registration page with a countdown timer. All you got to do is click the uh, check the checkbox and click the button, and then you can head over and start working on your new pages. So let's go look at the sales page first. And again, I do have an extended sales page training where we go through, uh, and the page uh, from that particular training does look a bit different uh, from this one, but the content on it is basically identical. And this page just, it's just so much better. This is something that Pam made. She's more of a designer than I am, uh, but it has uh, the the sort of flow of copy uh, that, um, that I had created on the original one, right? So uh, here's what we've got. We're calling out our ideal client. Uh, and we've got a, a contrasting background from the rest of the page. This is how you let people know that they're in the right place. Uh, you speak to the big benefit uh, and talk a little bit about why maybe that person doesn't have that thing in their life yet. Uh, answer an objection here and then tell them it's time to take action. Now, we're not telling them to take action and buy now. We're telling them it's time for them to kick that old life to the curb and get the new one, right? Here we are saying that the doors close in a, a few days. So we're giving them a period of time uh, wherein they can make their decision. This is a really important space here. Uh, we get into uh, what our program is, a couple of primary selling points. If they're coming here from somewhere else or they've already been sold, you could certainly uh, send them right here as a call to action that's going to open up the payment options on a pop-up here. And, uh, and and this, of course, uh, would allow somebody to move ahead if they wish. Now, um, throughout this page, we are kind of engaging in this conversation. So let's just say, for instance, you're really speaking to your ideal person right here. Maybe they've already heard a little bit about what this offer is. You've talked about it on social. You've emailed about it, whatever. They're ready and they're ready to purchase. They click here. They're done. But you've presented this and somebody said, yeah, I'm going to want to know more. So then let's start here by clarifying that this is for you. If you are this, then you're gonna want this, right? And so that's what this section is all about. And then we call out that pain and we tell them that life could be different. Your goals could be realized. All of these things are now possible. And we'll ask them if they're ready for the outcome that they're looking for, right? Again, this is a conversation that we're having. And you can see that we have prompts throughout to really give you an idea of what you can be saying in each of these spaces. Now we are introducing our program and saying that this is the thing that's going to solve the problem, give you the outcome, the thing that you're looking for. And we're going to tell them what they're going to find inside the program. This is where we have that breakdown. Um, this is where you want to really talk about the outcomes of each of these phases. We'll also talk about our bonuses and what they're worth. Then we break them down. Here's what th that phase one that we read about. Here's what it's worth. Phase two, three, bonus, one, two, right? And then we add it all up and then we tell them what they're paying for it, right? That call to action is going to take them down here if, they, if they're ready. 
And this is an option for you. Uh, you can choose to use this section or not, but essentially what we're doing here uh, is, is we're providing three different options. If you are paid in full, you can take the payment right here on this page. If you are sending them to, uh, to a vault, you would just link these buttons to that vault checkout, right? As opposed to the pop-up on this page, because that would be multi-part payment. All right. So um, again, we're telling them you've never seen anything else like this before. And by the way, other people believe the same thing. Here's our testimonials. Um, and then there's our payment options. And then here's our FAQs. Right. And you can expand these. You can add more of them. And I'll show you how to edit these in just a second. Here's what you get. Uh, what, here's what it's going to be like when you're done. You could choose to stay where you are or finally make the decision to move ahead. And by the way, I'm here. I know what I'm talking about. I can help you. And I've got your back. Here's my guarantees. Uh, if you're still not sure if you're this, it's for you. If it's not, if, if you're not, then it's not, right? And then we've, we're reiterating our payment options. So this is a full-blown sales page really designed to convert a high ticket offer on its own. This is highly involved. If you are selling high ticket, this is a sales page that you will want to use in full. You can modify or even delete or hide some of these sections if you wish, if you find that it is maybe something that's a bit more extensive than you need. But for now, let's head over here and talk about these time sensitive features, uh, starting with our, uh, our countdown timer. So our countdown timer is right here and I actually added it by adding a new section, just in case you're curious about how to do this. I created a one column section with a header. And what I did was I, um, I selected all of the text here and then I went in and I deleted everything except the headline. So the headline is, and this is, I said doors close in and then here, I'm going to add element, interactive countdown timer, right? And then you can play around with this. You can, um, I'm obviously going to remove some of the spaces here because I don't want a whole lot of extra padding. Uh, so I've placed it here. You also have the option of adding an entire section on its own by going to interactive and then just adding a section that is just that the countdown timer itself. But if you want to include additional copy like I've done here, you can do that. And then you can go straight over here and actually I'll just show you how I created this section. Um, so I went to, let me see, I'm gonna change my background color to, uh, to black. There we go. And let me see what I did here. All right, let me go back to my content here. And I'm gonna delete, okay, what did I do? <laughs> I messed up. Here's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna start over with a new section and I'm gonna color it first. So here's my, my one column with header. I'm going to make that background black as I want it to be. I'm gonna select all of the text. I'm gonna make the text white so it stands out. I'm gonna delete the text that I don't want and any additional spaces that I don't want. And then I'm gonna add element and that is my countdown timer. All right, so now I can go into the countdown timer and make modifications. Maybe I want it to be a bit smaller. Maybe I want the text color to be white. Uh, I want to change the date. So maybe it's going to count down to the 31st here. And then of course I do need to add where this is going to go. Now, a real quick note, if you would like to use a, a wait list, you wanna send them to the a landing page for a wait list, then here's what you're gonna to wanna to do. Make sure that you have set up a page uh, and we actually have a, um, we have a training on this. I'll show you where to find it. Um, but then you could also just simply create a wait list right here. So here's wait list page, right? This is under coming soon wait list. And you can create a wait list. And so what it looks like when it's published, right? So this is launching soon or, um, you know, our cohort is currently working together. We look forward to working with you on a future one for now, get my free thing, right? Uh, so if you want to learn more about creating a waitlist funnel, 
It's a landing page to that waitlist funnel you're going to want to put into, uh, into this field right here. Go to this URL when the countdown expires. And you, what you can do is you can go to live training and replace here and type in waitlist. And you will see right here, waitlist funnels right here. So first one. So if you want to get more into that and create one of those to put right here, highly recommend that you do. So anyway, you can now see that this is done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I already have one. Obviously, you would go through and make these modifications to your page. By the way, all of the Canva templates that you would want to use are included right down here. All you have to do is click. And then when you click one of these links, this open link guy right here, that's going to send you to the Canva templates for this page. So if you want to replace any of the images that you see here, it's quite easy to do that. Now let's look at our FAQ section. Uh, this is right here. We can go through and look at our style. You can see that there's a preview here. If I want to have uh, my background colors different, or if I want to have my text colors different, we can, of course, do that, you see? And they um, and they do expand uh, and uh, show the same style for all of them. It's one setting for all of the FAQs, see? Pretty, pretty cool. So the FAQs are going to be really important on sales pages for you to address things that would um, help to close the sale, right? So these are going to be qualifying questions that someone might be asking. Uh, these are typically closing questions, to be fair. Uh, these are the types of things that if you have been doing sales calls, um, that folks are typically asking before they give their payment information. So you're going to want to put those things into your FAQ section, which again is really easy to edit. All you have to do is decide the style that you want, and then you can go in and modify the content, right? So you can ask the question here, and then you can even, you can put lots of information here in this content field, including short videos or images, and you can format the text, and those are fully expandable here, uh, this FAQ section. All right, so that is your sales page and uh, and the features that you can include there with it. Let's take a look at the workshop registration page with the countdown timer. The waitlist page, Melissa, is absolutely a great way to build your email list, uh, and that's a that, that's kind of the the way that I positioned that training <laughs> was this is a great way to grow your email list. Uh, so so yeah, absolutely. Um, here's what this one looks like when it is published. And this is actually um, designed very similarly to the um, to the waitlist template that you have in your system. So here, uh, this is your workshop, and I actually need to modify. Um, I'll show you how to modify this in just a bit because it's obviously run out, uh, but it doesn't have a redirect in it. Now you see that this one looks quite a bit different from the other one, right? Now this is completely optional, but what you can do uh, with your countdown timer, and actually what I'm gonna do is just create a, a new countdown timer with an interactive section here and show you how I did this thing here. Cause you guys can see how, um, each of these individual sections for days, hours, minutes, seconds, uh, they are similarly formatted to this, right? So they've got like this light blue uh, border around them and they're over top of this uh, darker teal section with a white background. So I'll show you how you can replicate a similar function here. So right here, I'm gonna change my background color to the same one as you see here. I'm gonna go in here and edit my, um, gonna go to my content editor and edit this guy. I wanna make him a little bit smaller. I want the text color to be white. You're gonna to wanna to put your URL in here where you wanna send people and obviously modify uh, the date that this countdown ends and give it a transparent background in this case. If you don't give it a transparent background, it's just going to show up all the way across like this, which is fine uh, if that's your choice. But I'm gonna go with transparent just so you guys can see how I created almost like this. Um, it reminds me sort of like a like a scoreboard countdown, right? That's uh, That was my thinking here in creating this. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, and actually this needs to be black, because we're going to be using the same formatting as we have here. So this is black. That means we need to change the background of these individual things. So I'm going to the edit element styles control right here. And then I'm going to select each one of these. And I'm going to first 
give it the full background opacity. And then you can actually kind of see that the, the space is kind of small there. And you see that there's actually quite a bit more padding on these. It looks nicer. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to click on him again. I gave him about four pixels padding on the bottom and eight on the left and the right. And so I did this for each one of these. And then while I was here, I also gave it a border just like this. And then I changed the color of the border to be the same as the one that is on the other part of the section. So there we go. So then I basically just repeated that for each one of these guys so that they all show up like that. Now, this is obviously optional. This is a very kind of dialed in design choice you could choose to make, but you really do have the ability to, um, to play around with this and make it look exactly how you want it to. Now, continuing uh, with this um, with this page here, you do have the option because I did mention you can use this registration page uh, to make this something that is paid if you wanted. So this could be not just a form to put in your name and email, but also a place to take payment if this is maybe a paid workshop. Right. You obviously do want to make sure that in a section here or maybe even in the same section that you include your countdown timer, uh, you might want to put in the details of the date, time, et cetera. Right. So that would be maybe right here. Right. Where we can put in the date and time above this section here. Um, or you could, again, put that in the form, which is going to be right under here, under page settings leads, and then this information here, right? So we would say, you know, date, time, location, right? And then once we do that and you preview it, you'll be able to see that information here as well. All right. So continuing here, we are breaking down what they're going to get in the workshop. And again, there are templates for this page as well, all the way down at the bottom. Right here, all you have to do is click this open link right here. And you can utilize the Canva templates that I have here for all of these images. Here's a section to talk about you and why they would want to hear from you. And then information from your clients, so your, um, your testimonials. We also have an FAQ section here. And again, you can see in this FAQ section, I've edited it to, um, to really fit the design of the rest of the page. So we've got this dark teal color and we've got this green color repeating throughout. And so down here, we've got our teal as well. And so we have our FAQ section uh, set up accordingly. I'll show you what that looks like. We've got our background color here and then I want the background color uh, to be white. Um, as the uh, the answer part. So I want the questions to be this green color or this teal color rather, and then the answers to be in white. You could obviously swap that around. You could really set this up however you want. So you establish the style, then you put in your content. You know, if this is a registration page uh, for like a webinar, for instance, people are gonna ask, is the recording going to be available, uh, et cetera. You can be addressing questions like that here. And then finally, we have a call to action, a final call to action at the end. You had all of your questions answered. Now let's do this. And in this case, I'll show you how this is designed. If they make it all the way down to the bottom of the page and they click this button here, it's going to send them right back up to the top. Now, one other thing uh, that I want to make sure that we are super clear on, and this is true for the sales page and this registration page, I want you to go to your page settings and don't show the header or the footer. Why? Because on either of these pages, we are trying to get someone to make a decision. And the one decision we want them to make is to take advantage of the offer that's on the screen right now. And that means that every link that is on this page needs to lead them to where you want them, which is where they put in their name and email or put in their name, email and payment information, right? So again, that's gonna be true on both of these. So you're gonna go into the settings, do not show header, do not show footer. That way, again, the only links they are going to be able to click on this page are going to be the ones that get them into the system, get them sold, et cetera. All right, 
So let's see if we have any questions. Uh, I'm excited to kind of learn more about your use cases and how you, you think you guys might like to use uh, these two pages. Uh, Janelle says, I'm looking to create a survey about live events. Um, would or could I do this on a registration page? So you could. Uh, now, if you're wanting to like collect and analyze data in, if you have a large list, for instance, and you're trying to collect and analyze data of a large list, we don't have traditional survey um, functions in our system, but you can have a form. You absolutely can set up a form where you are collecting questions. You are going to have to kind of manually go through uh, and, and, and see who said what if you wanted to, um, you know, kind of analyze that. So if it's a small audience, absolutely. You can just set it up and attract well, and you can, you know, go back and, and kind of manually check out those answers that were given. Uh, but if it is a larger audience, then you can use a free version of something like Typeform, for instance. That's something that we use a lot when we actually want to analyze data. Uh, we'll take a Typeform and then we'll embed the Typeform into a page in attract well. So this registration page would be best for the live course I'm about to teach without having to use a vault. 100% yes. Uh, that registration page or the sales page, I would say the registration page would be more effective if, if you're just selling a live course, uh, because then what you're doing is you're taking uh, payment on that page. People get to the point quickly. You're probably going to sell at a lower price point than you would, you know, a high ticket offer. Uh, so yeah, use the registration page, but take payment. Um, you might want to add just a touch more information. If I was going to use that page as a sales page, I might add another section or two that kind of engages the story or something like that. Um, unless, again, it's like a really low cost offer and something that would be easy for your audience to uh, see as valuable enough to convert quickly. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Just make sure you set that page up for payment and you take payment. Um, you could as well, and this is always going to be a great idea on a sales page, include a video. And this would be great on a registration page as well. So like a quick video message from you. I wouldn't go more than maybe three three to five minutes. I think three minutes is really a sweet spot there uh, to kind of demonstrate in action what people are going to see, what they're going to experience, in particular for higher ticket offers. Having something like that is a good idea. Oriana, I am planning a paid webinar in one month. Awesome. Uh, this is the first page I'm creating on Attractwell, so I know I have a lot to learn. Can you show how to add the form where participants will be led to pay for the webinar? Yeah, totally. So uh, what we'll do is just going back over to that same template that we were using, which is this one. What you would do is in your settings here, you would go under payments. Now this particular account doesn't have a payment processor set up and we do have training and help articles on payments and setting up your payment forms. So if we type in payment, I'm all caps here, uh, you can actually, here we go, payment processing. Um, Payment processing is an article that we have in here that just showed up a second ago. Uh, yeah, so what you would do is in your settings, uh, you would set up your payment and in that payment setting, so maybe it's there's just one payment option, it's the name of the webinar or something like that, uh, and then there's the price. Uh, that's what you're going to have set up. And then you would just set the lead form up similarly, right? So you've got your compelling call to action, uh, and then you can decide where they go after they register. So you need to make sure that you have your campaign here. Now this campaign is going to be one that you set up that includes maybe the link to the Zoom call, for instance. Um, you're gonna wanna tag them uh, for, you know, as being a webinar participant. And then you're gonna wanna send them to a confirmation or thank you page, uh, just closing out the deal, letting them see that they did successfully uh, purchase that workshop uh, that, you, um, that you offered. And feel free if you have any um, follow-up questions to that, then we can certainly talk through it. And congratulations, I'm excited for you. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun for you. Uh, once you once you have one of those set up the first time, it's so easy to just go back and repeat over and over again. Um, so as you're going through that, feel free to reach out and uh, we're, we're happy to help you along the way. Let me see. Uh, can these be standalone sites? as sales pages or embed this on a current site? Can we set up a form or announcement that we can paste in social media? 
Okay, yeah. So Charlie, um, these would be pages that live on your Attractwell site. So um, these are, they do stand alone on your Attractwell site. Ideally, you have connected your Attractwell site to a domain that you own, right? And then this becomes your website. So um, if you don't have a website developed yet, or maybe you have it one developed elsewhere, uh, but you haven't migrated all of that content over to Attractwell yet, I would encourage you to absolutely just set this up on Attractwell and then use it for the thing that you're selling, right? You can use Attractwell incrementally in your business. If you're well-established somewhere else or in multiple other places, you can use us incrementally, right? So if you have an existing website that's you know working fine, but you're launching offers, you can use us just to collect payments and fulfill those offers uh, for now, and then plan to start migrating those other features of your business into Attractwell. Or if you don't have any lead generation sitting uh, system set up yet, you can be promoting the offers, the, the freebies that you're using to grow your list, uh, wherever you're showing up already, social media, your other websites, et cetera, but you're sending them to a page in Attractwell where they're going to register, get into your system. And then of course you can move forward from there. So yeah, you don't have to do everything in Attractwell all at once. You can actually benefit a great deal by um, just choosing the thing that you need right now and incorporating that into what you're already doing. And then just making it a point to gradually move uh, those other pieces over because chances are we could fulfill all the functions you have from whatever 27 platforms you might be using and we can make your life a little simpler. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, Sonia, are you here? Yes. Awesome. I'm going to bring you out to chat. I'm very excited to hear how things have been going in your business. And I think you were interested in um, talking about group calls today. Is that right? Yes, I was. So it, everything's going great. I just, um, I'm trying to find, so I've done um, packages for families and students, and they're kind of like one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, which have had amazing reviews and, and it's been great. But it's like when it ends, because it's like a month or four sessions, it's like, how can I get them to continue, you know, to work with them? And I'm thinking more of um, what I'm thinking is a membership program for like those students who want to continue to have like office hours with me, but in a group setting. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm envisioning is I'm envisioning maybe having two topics a month specifically for seniors, graduating seniors moving on to college. And having just twice a month where I have a topic of conversation pertinent to them and then open office hours for questions on that transition from high school to college. So my question is, well, I have two questions, but the first one is, how do I create that? I know it would be a vault. Mm -hmm. um, and then how do I create that, that Zoom link that's just specific for those people within the vault? Yeah. So there is actually a com more or less complete blueprint for the recurring call model inside of a vault. Uh, and it's in a training that we did um, that I think I did. I call it book club. Uh, we were talking about running a book club. Essentially. Yeah, here we go. Oh, okay. This training right here. Okay. Uh, and there should be, I believe there's some resources in here as well. Um, yep. There's a checklist here. Perfect. Yep. Here we go. So this is book club, but I, I want you to just maybe throw out the idea of book club. Um, this is just going to be like how you approach organizing what your weekly um, subject matter is, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and so this is the setup in Attract Well, right? So you create your recurring Zoom meeting uh, for for your weekly calls and save that link. So I actually walk you through all of the steps uh, to get all of that done. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So Perfect. that's that's essentially then, it. Yeah. Except the the vault would be paid and it would be set up as a subscription. Okay. Awesome. I, I kept looking and searching. And I couldn't come up with you know with the video, but that works out perfect. Okay. Run a a book call is what it's called. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Book book My, club. Uh huh. Book club. Yes. Book club. And then they can, you know, if they don't show up, I do want them to have access to the video. It kind of stays in the vault. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So since you're running that on Zoom, I believe that's a part of the checklist as well. So on the call, you're going to be recording to the cloud. 
right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, uh, and then that um, that cloud recording is going to show up in your Attractwell account, and then you're able to convert that to a video in your Attractwell video manager and add that to your replays page. Perfect, perfect. And then, is it going to be something where they? How do I make sure that only those students are the ones attending? Um, is it password protected each time? Is it a different password each time? Yeah, so uh, it's it's going to, you can choose to have a special password for this, for sure. Uh, and you can choose for the link to these uh, these the meetings to only be inside of the password protected vault uh, or to okay. only send them via email to the people who are enrolled, right? Okay, uh, yeah. And, and you can, and I recommend for calls like this that you have the waiting room set up anyway, unless, unless it's going to be, you know, if it's 50, 100 people, you don't want to worry about that uh, yeah. so much. But if yeah. it is a smaller number of people, you can always just kind of vet uh, who's there. Perfect, perfect. My second question, and this kind of ties in with what you just said, where would you recommend I put a waiting list on my page for this specific um, idea that I have? Because I'm not going to launch it probably until like maybe, I don't know, next month or two. Yeah, so what I would do is I would go to, um, here we go. Uh, from your site, mm -hmm. I would have a page, like, so I would create a waitlist page. Uh, and then what I would do is maybe put a call out up here at the top. So what that would look like is, um, I'll just show you an example of what, yeah. um, what that could look like. And you could do this on the top of any of, I think your, your more popular pages. So put it at the top of your podcast page, put it at the top of your oh. homepage, right? Um, yeah. But you, you're basically just going to go and create a um, a header, like so a thin header in this case, and use like a nice contrasting color. I was actually thinking a, a like a, a yellow would be nice here because it's mm -hmm. um, it, it goes with the blue and it also uh, we're pulling from that, that kind of gold yellow in your skirt. So let's actually go grab yeah. that color. Yeah, so we could put that there and um, and then we could just basically say, um uh join the wait list and then say whatever you know about the offer uh and then you're going to put a button in here before i do that i'm going to actually shrink this significantly um so let me take it down to Is there another word other than membership that tends to be used or or just membership is the standard for something that's a monthly recurring so I would actually brand it based on the currencies of your ideal people. So this would be College Ready Academy, or this would be College Ready mm -hmm. Club or something like that. And then you can get into the details of it being a membership on the actual sales page for it. I love that. Perfect. Okay. Or we could say something like College Ready Club is launching soon. Um, and then we could put a button here. And we'll use like this teal one because it's nice and contrasting. And we'll say, get on the wait list. And then you would put, um, this would link to whatever that page is that you set up for your wait list uh, landing page, right? And then you, of course, you know, modify this to your liking. You probably want this text to be white in this case. And maybe a little bit of extra padding on the bottom to give it some balance. But yeah, you can take a, a section just like this. And for now, just pop it onto the front of, of or the top of any page on your website. Oh, beautiful. When you clicked on get on the wait list, um, you said I would have to create, I would have to create another page that. That's right. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Would so be... you would, you would go to, what you're going to want to do is go to pages here mm -hmm. and create a new one. And then over here where mm -hmm. it says coming soon slash wait list, you're Perfect. just going to use Which is use the this. one you talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also just a, a bonus uh, here, I'm going to mm -hmm. hide this for you. And then you mm -hmm. can just have that to work with later. Uh, but we also have a training on creating a wait list funnel that has all of the, the full steps. So I would do that first. So don't Perfect. worry about even creating the vault yet. Like that's a whole mm -hmm. other set of steps. Just start grabbing wait list folks. Uh, so type in wait list in our live mm -hmm. training and replays. And we actually have the full set of steps to follow, not just to oh. use that page, but to, you know, what are you connecting to it? Uh, you know, a campaign, et cetera. Um, so yeah, you're gonna get the whole, the whole walkthrough is gonna be in this training that. here. 
Okay, that answers my question. Awesome, glad we could help. Yes, thank you. For sure. All right, more questions. Kelly says, I'm fairly new to attract well, so I'm still getting my bearings. Could you show me where or how to find a draft email? I saved one the other day and then couldn't find it later. Yeah, totally. Let me get back into um, an account that I can demo for you and I'll show you exactly where to go. And no shame, everything is new <laughs> when we're new <laughs> and that's totally okay. Uh, so it's gonna be, let me go to my dashboard here and get into the right account. There we go. And I'll show you where to go. Okay, so from your dashboard, we're gonna go over here to messages under contacts. And then you can actually see right up here, scheduled and sent drafts, scheduled, sent history. So drafts is where you're gonna wanna go. So if you actually, um, if you actually have a draft that you have saved, this is where you're going to find it. All right, Karen says, I was wondering how do I embed a TV segment that I did on a local news show into my website and where best to put it in the website as a way to establish authority? I think that's an awesome idea. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take the video clip and upload it to your video manager in AttractWell. And then you're gonna to wanna to decide based on the substance of what's in the interview. So what is it that you're talking about? That's gonna kind of dictate where this shows up on your website. I think your homepage is a fine place to go for this. Uh, but you want to be thinking about, again, like there's there's a dialogue on your on your website pages that's taking place between you and the visitor. And so at what point is the information from that video going to make the most impact in terms of the conversation that you're having with them? Right. So if we think about the conversation we're having on our homepage, for instance, we're letting them know, here's who I am and here's who I help. If this is you, here are the things that you can take advantage of, right? And then I would maybe consider putting a section like this a little bit further down because this is where someone arrives if they decided not to take advantage of what you're offering. We wanna place what we are offering, like something to get onto our list at the very top of the page because that's where most people are going to decide whether they stay or go. So put something compelling there, but then as they get a little further down, if they haven't made a decision to go to another page on your website or take you up on your offer, they probably need to know more about you. Right. So you can say, here is where I talked about X, Y, Z thing on such and such network. And you can pop that into a section right there. You can have that maybe accompanying your about me section. Uh, and then, of course, something like this could actually be well served potentially on an about me page. I just want to encourage you to keep whatever the substance of that clip is. Uh, make sure that that is placed in solid context with the points that you're making on the page. So it needs to be supporting element of the page. Krista says, after watching this, I'm thinking I could use the registration page for a simplified sales page for a pilot program for my five-week course. Since Martha suggested that we could duplicate our sales page and put it below text that is my confirmation page for my lead magnet, I'm wondering if this is possible with this template. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this template is completely modifiable to you, whatever you want to do with it. Um, you can use the copy in page feature, which is essentially you're going to add a new section to the page and there's a copy in page button. So if you have a sales page that you've already made, you could drop it all the way underneath there, right? So um, yeah, so something like that could be, you know, a version of, or in addition to a page that you already have, absolutely. Um, but I I would encourage you though, uh, and just to make sure, cause I'm not hundred percent sure that I understood that completely. I hope that that makes sense. Please come to me with follow-up questions if you have them, uh, but do make sure that your lead magnet is not offered on the same page as your offer that you're selling right? So if you are selling something, that's the only thing that needs to be offered. It's the only call to action that needs to exist on that page, right? It's the only link that needs to exist on that page is, is them going to make that purchase. Um, anything else is going to um, decrease the effectiveness of your page massively, right? Because now you're giving them a door number two. We're really like, we're here to sell door number one. If we tell them there's a door number two, why do they want to buy a door number one, <laughs> right? Um, how did you move that button? I've tried and can't move my button. So Melody, this is going to depend on where you put it. Um, but generally speaking, and I, I'll, I'll go ahead because I know exactly where you were talking about. I'll show you how I did that. Sometimes when you're in a section, and I don't know, for me, it's it's often, I think it might depend on your browser, or I think maybe this is just a thing that happens with, um, with our page editor. But if we go into, let's just say I'll use uh, this homepage template. 
And I want to create a call out like I did for Sonia. So I'm adding a section. By the way, there's that copy in another page feature. If you want to use something that exists on another page, you can import it. Um, I'm going to go to header and footer, then header. I'm going to decrease the text size here because, again, I, I don't want it to be that big. Uh, and then I want to, I'm going to tell them to click here now. And I'm going to go add element. And I'm going to add my button. And you see how it popped up down here? I'm going to put my cursor. You see where it's right here? My cursor is right here. I'm hitting delete or backspace. And it's moving it up one line. That's all I did there. <laughs> so if you ever see if your button, uh, if you insert a button and it, it's uh, down at the bottom of the section, just put your cursor at the back end of it and hit delete and it should move it up to where you want it to go. Uh, and then, of course, you know, for all of it, you can, you know, change the sort of paragraph um, orientation of that as well. All right, let me see if I've missed anything here in our chat. Oh, I'm so happy this is helpful to you. <laughs> Hilariously easy. That's not true. <laughs> it looks easy because I'm doing it. <laughs> um, but I, no, this stuff does get very easy if you just do it, right? And and this, don't you know that's true for everything, right? None of us are, well, most of us, some of y'all are just gifted. <laughs> most of us don't just waltz into something the first time and nail it right? We obviously have to play around with this stuff, have a little fun with it, uh, obviously walk away from it. You know, if it's swallowing our attention, come back with some perspective, maybe spend a little bit of time, ask some questions, watch a little bit of a video, get some more clarity or show up here. And yeah, I'll show you how to do it as quickly as I'm able to. Um, oh, thank you so much for that, Melissa. Greg, I hope that you saw that. <laughs> Okay, different size buttons available. Never seen that in my account. So yeah, Jaleen, this is, um, I'll show you two places where you can find these buttons uh, and or two, two ways that you can introduce buttons. So the first is going to be um, over, let me see, it's gonna be, so you get into to edit your content and this is really the best way to do it uh, is to, well, it's not necessarily the best. I'll show you something. If you look at that, it's huge, wow. Um, okay, so if you want to just type in text, this could make your life super easy. If you want the button to be similar size to your text, uh, we can say, uh, we can write whatever it is we want to say. Then we're going to highlight it. We're going to hyperlink it. So I'm going to just put a pound sign here because I don't know where I want to send it, but I do know that I want it to be a link. I'll come back and change this later, right? So hit insert. Now it's clickable. Now you can go over here where it says style and you can choose one of your preset buttons. So maybe I want this purple button and now we have a button that's in line. But what if I wanna add another button? Maybe I wanna add a big button. I'm gonna unlink this and I'm going to go to add element and you can add like monster buttons if you want to, even like two line buttons, look how big that is. Obviously it would be a terrible thing to use in this section. Uh, but this is an option that you have as well. And if you want to change the way that those buttons look um, and the options that you have for the colors or like that, you know, white one with the black outline, et cetera, that's going to be under colors and fonts here under your website settings. There's your button colors. Highly recommend that you take your brand guideline and change all of these so that they are in keeping with your brand palette and the colors that you're using on your website. So it's just very easy to grab and go with exactly the colors that you wanna use and that they'll show up. So like some of these are like the ones that show up at the bottom of a landing page automatically. Um, some of these are the ones that will show up in your member area automatically. So uh, definitely make sure that you make those modifications. Awesome. Do we have any more questions before we get going? Glad you guys like the templates today. Let us know if there are more things that you need for your system. We're always looking for ways to improve, uh, add more templates like these, uh, show you more features and functions so that you know what to do. Uh, and of course, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of connecting the dots. Sonia wants a membership and she wants to run weekly calls. I just happen to know that I did a book club training that translates to that perfectly. <laughs> so um, 
yeah. So if you guys have questions like that, feel free uh, to reach out next week. We are going to be addressing a very popular question, which is, I have all of these things. What do I bring to attract well first? I don't want my business to fall apart, but I also want to start saving some money, making some money, etc. I know all the things that I'd like to do, but what do I do first? And then what comes after that? so that I have an orientation of where I need to go. If that sounds like a familiar question in your mind, if that is something that you are struggling with uh, or are kind of chewing on right now, next week's going to be a great time to pop in and hang out with us. So we'll be back same time, 2 p.m. Eastern U.S. time next week. Till then, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. We'll see you then. Take care.